Dr. Logan, I think you would have found the entire uh, United States uh, totally involved in the war. The, it was a very patriotic time. Uh, I think everyone in the United States, including myself, uh, felt very patriotic. We wanted to do everything we could to to help the war effort. There was all kind of things going on at home. Uh, there was rationing at that time. Gasoline was rationed. Uh, food was rationed. Uh, tires were rationed. Uh, the country had quit making automobiles at that time, and all of the effort, uh, all of the manufacturers were busy making airplanes and tanks and all of the equipment that are necessary to conduct the war. And it was just a, it was a time when the entire nation was totally back of the war. We were all worried and concerned about our country, and uh, we wanted to do everything we could to help the cause. Uh, yes, we we had one because uh, uh, my uncle was in service, or both of my uncles were in service, uh, and then I was right at the tail end of the war. I went into service myself, and uh, yes, we did have a flag in our window, and uh, if you went around the country, I think most, just about every home had a flag in the window because it was just, there were so many people involved. I was in the United States Navy, and I served aboard the USS North Carolina a battleship. And I was—I uh, served in the South Pacific against the Japan uh, against Japanese. Uh, I think I was like—I guess most of the other young men at that time in the country. Uh, I felt a duty and a responsibility to help defend my nation, and. Uh, it was just something we all wanted to do. It wasn't a matter of whether we had to do it. It was something we all wanted to do. And I was very anxious to to get to the age where I could go in service and serve my country. Uh, I first went to Jacksonville, uh, where we were uh, uh, given uh, a physical examination. And then from there, if you were going in Navy, I went to Bainbridge, Maryland, and that's where our local boot camp was held. And we uh, finished boot camp there, and then after boot camp, uh, then all the servicemen from boot camp were uh, assigned at the various places throughout the world. Yes, I certainly can. It's very vivid in my mind. Uh, I was sitting along with uh, your grandfather, Drake, uh, with our mother and Drake's father and the manager of a place called Webb's Cafeteria. Uh, and we were all sitting there having breakfast when it came over the radio that uh, Pearl Harbor had attacked. Yes, I did. I think that most everyone in the United States were sitting there listening to the radio when he made the announcement. I was too young to support the war at home. I was in the, I was in high school at that time. But uh, throughout the United States, uh, most everyone was involved in in the manufacture of either weapons or you know that type thing that were. That was used in the war, either aircraft or tanks or ammunition or involved in the manufacturing of various type things. And, uh, and uh, so most everyone was involved in the fact that uh, uh, there was rationing going on. And so we all had to do without. We, uh, uh, gasoline was rationed, food was rationing, rationed uh, automobiles. They quit manufacturing automobiles. They were not producing any tires, and so in that manner, everyone supported the cause by by giving up certain things. Uh, yes, uh, I had uh, 
two uncles and a number of friends involved that served uh, during World War II, including myself. Uh, yes, I did. I saw a, a U.S. officer a show uh, aboard my ship. Uh, a comedian by the name of Joey Brown uh, came aboard our ship and put on a show. And uh, then I saw a number of ones when I was in New York City. Uh, before I went overseas, I saw a number of U.S.O. shows there also. I think that they were... Like most everything in the United States, everyone was back in the war. There was services held uh, for the servicemen. There was there was uh, all kind of uh, shows put on. There was all kind of efforts on the part of the various uh, churches throughout the United States in the gathering of war packages uh, to be sent to the troops uh, wherever they might be stationed overseas. Uh, yes, I, I knew quite a few of them, uh, and that's exactly what had happened. Most of the men are the men that were eligible uh, because of age and physical condition were uh, in the in the various uh, branches of service throughout the United States as well as overseas. So there was a there was a dire need for people to work in the factories and and everywhere throughout the United States, and the ladies played that part in the war. They served in all capacities uh, throughout the United States and in all areas of manufacturing. <laughs> I was like most servicemen at that time. We were extremely happy. Uh, we felt like that uh, we were... We were on the verge of uh, really getting to the point to where we were far superior to the other forces and we could actually begin to see the probable end of the war at D-Day. Uh, I think he was an individual that was power hungry. Uh, he was a very, apparently a very brilliant person, uh, but he was certainly a very evil person. And that I think I was like most people throughout the United States and in the service, he was very much despised and hated. Well, they were very evil, of course. Uh, there was rules, the Geneva Conference, and various organizations that set certain rules that uh, set a standard for how uh, uh, captured troops were to be treated uh, by us as well as our enemies. And uh, the Germans uh, did not follow the Geneva Conference. They did not treat our prisoners properly. Uh, they were starved. They were mistreated. Uh, it was a very barbaric, barbaric thing. Uh, uh, and... Uh, I think most of the people in the United States were very upset. They were very aware of how our people were being treated, and there was great concern throughout the United States about this. As I did, because I was in service, was in the South Pacific, but I feel sure that uh, most of the citizens uh, in that particular area uh, were concerned, yes. other than what we read in the paper, we were aware, of course, as citizens that uh, the German U-boats were operating uh, on the East Coast, uh, very close to the United States, and, and like I said, there was, a, there was a concern on the part of all, all citizens. Uh, the best way to describe the feelings of the United States after Pearl Bar after Pearl Harbor, uh, there was a hatred. Uh, I think the most of the people in the United States were very concerned, and they had a very, very deep resentment towards Japanese 
because of the way the attack occurred.